Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode on the Happiness Happens Podcast. I'm your host, Simona, and I am so excited to be here with you today. So excited to share this conversation with you. We are talking today about three ways to increase genuine happiness. And we previously recorded this episode on the Set to Love podcast. I was a guest on their show, and we just talked about so many incredible things and aspects of happiness that people don't typically think about. So I just had to share this episode with you today. I had such an amazing time with these fabulous ladies. They have so much energy and just so much light and love to share with the world that I just had to bring you this conversation over on my podcast as well. We talked a lot about soul purpose and really how to tap into our authentic, true happiness, and also some actionable strategies and ways that you can increase genuine happiness in your life and access that place on a soul level. Before we dive into the conversation, I just want to read you a quick review of the show, one that came in recently and absolutely made my day. It says, happiness in a bottle. Simona's energy is so uplifting. You'll leave every podcast with more motivation, spirit, and the right mindset to make your dream life and business happen. A must listen for entrepreneurs not willing to give up their happiness, but find their balance in being a business owner. And this is from Creative Rachel. Thank you so, so, so much, Creative Rachel, for this beautiful review. I am so incredibly grateful for your beautiful words. And if you feel like leaving a review of the podcast while you're listening to the show, you can over on Apple Podcast. Uh, just scroll down to the bottom, click write a review, leave us five stars, and let us know what you're loving about the show. So without further ado, let's dive into this conversation. And I would love to know your thoughts on the show. I would love to know how this resonates with you. So if you're listening, be sure to tag us on Instagram at Happiness Happens Podcast. All of the links are in the show notes to find us on social media. And just let me know you're listening. Let me know what you're loving and let me know how this conversation has impacted you. Okay, let's dive in. Today on Set to Love, we have life coach and podcast producer, Simona Constantini. We're talking about happiness and ways to increase it. So let's go. Welcome. Yay. Good morning. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. Welcome. welcome to our show. Hey, you said you just got married. So is Con Constantini your married name or is that your maiden no. name? No, it's my, it's my maiden name, but my husband and I are very different people. We're just, everything we do has to just be different than everybody else. So we actually made our own last name. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. I totally, I, I want to dive into happiness and Hey, this is it because tell me about that. You guys just decided like, this is what's going to make us happy. We're going to just create Shane a name. Did you use both a little bit of your, each of your last names or how did that come about? Honestly, it, so the, it came about, I'll keep it short. Cause I don't want to like, yeah, I, was I, to to today. I don't know what, where it really came from. I was, I had no ties to his last name. I love my last name. And we just kind of were like, okay, instead of me taking your last name, like, let's just make our own. So it's actually Sintini, S-I-N-T-I-N-I. And so that's a blend of both of our last names together. But for my business and purposes, like everything is branded Costantini. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But yeah. So like if we ever have kids one day, they'll be Sintini, which is so crazy. Like imagine trying to do like the, like the family tree or whatever in like 20 years. And they're going to be like, wait, <laughs> where, are they where did they come from? Where did it break? <laughs> That'll be a story in itself. I love it. And I like to keep people guessing. <laughs> So how do you want to start us off about this happiness? I'm really excited because I love happy. Okay, Me wait, before, before you start and go into your three tips, just tell people a little bit about you. I know I introduced you, but just give us a little bit of background of who you are, what you do, where you come from, what you love doing, and then we'll go into these happiness tips. Done. Okay, so I'm Simona. Um, I'm just from just outside uh, of Toronto, Canada, and I live in wine country. I really do enjoy going to the wineries. We spent some time there this weekend. It was lovely. I have a five-month-old puppy named Gus. And wow. I am a life coach and podcast producer. So I run an agency. It's called Costantini Productions. And then we help clients launch, manage, grow, monetize, edit, like everything for their podcasts. And then I also have my life coaching clients. So typically people who are in the entrepreneurial space more so just really trying to figure out their path and how they can get to where they want to be. And I also have a podcast that's called Happiness Happens. 
So I have had the podcast for two and a half years and very short how it was born was through my own struggle and like probably darkest period of my life. Um, and I felt like, you know, after trying to figure out for like a year, how do I take all the things that I've learned and transform my life and bring them to other people to help them live their life on purpose? It just came to me. Happiness happens. And on the show, I dive into a lot of different topics around, you know, what does it really mean to be happy? What is happiness? What's false happiness? Like, why why do are we so tied to this idea that everything, you know, that we have to be happy all the time? Because that's not necessarily truth, the truth. So I really do try and like challenge what people think about traditional happiness. And the goal of the show when I first started and still remains true today, years later, was helping people feel like they're not alone. Ultimately, that was the goal. And it couldn't be more valid at a time than right now, you know, especially with the last couple of years, couple of years, it's almost two years that we've had. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But, you know what? I, I know you're going to start, but I did have a question really quick. Do you think part of the problem with people too with happiness is they have an expectation if this happens, it's going to make me happy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, what's the difference of that kind of a, I would say that would be a false happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Start from there. I'm just curious. Definitely. So I think that a lot of the times when people are trying to find things that make them happy, you're kind of grasping at things that are outside of yourself. You're grasping at money. You're grasping at clients. You're grasping at your job, your friends, relationships. What does your partner do for you? What does your partner not do for you? Like all of those external things to try and create this like internal validation. But I think the biggest problem that people sort of come across is that those things are great and they'll give you that temporary happiness. Of course, you'll be happy when you bring on a new client. Of course, you're going to be happy when you make, you know, a, a grand. Of course, you're going to be happy when, you know, your husband cooks you dinner. Like, of course, those things will make you happy. But those are not long term happiness. Those are small snippets of things that you get, you know, small moments here and there. What I've learned and what I talk about often is that lasting happiness really does come from the inside out. It comes from trying to break down all of the stories that you've told yourself, the fear that you've lived with that has stopped you from really doing what you want to do, right? Because, and you know, this is something we can dive more into in a bit, but that big idea of what do I love to do? What is it that I love to do every single day? Where am I spending my time and energy? And are those things fueling my soul? Or are they just additional things on the side that I do because I feel like I should do them? You know, it's about differentiating those two pieces in that on one side of the coin, yeah, like those are all great things. But on the other side of the coin, like it's not going to make you happy forever. What will make you happy forever is falling in love with yourself and in love with your life and this journey that you're on here today. And that's the biggest thing because I always think that people look outside of themselves to find that happiness, which is valid but it's not long-term in my personal opinion. (laughs) I agree with you. One of the things you talked about was acceptance being like one Mm. of the first things to increase happiness. So what do you Mm. mean by acceptance? What does that look like for you? Yeah. So I'll give you a personal example, especially lately, because here's the thing. I love, I love to talk about happiness. My podcast is called happiness happens. I will come on to people's podcasts and talk about these different topics and concepts. The biggest misconception that I've seen in my own life is that people think because I talk about happiness all the time, that I don't ever get unhappy. But that couldn't be further from the truth. There are always moments that are challenging. And so one of the biggest so, you know, not to get too into like the whole COVID thing, whatever, but I live in Canada, and it's very different than the rest of the world, right? It's been we have been in a very long lockdown. So anyways, what I had to figure out was, I needed to accept the things that I honestly could not change. I cannot change the fact that I'm not, I'm not able to leave the country. I can't change that. You know what I mean? But what I can change and is my acceptance of around the ideas of things that, you know, what can I, what can I control right now in my immediate environment and how can I create an acceptance around it that allows me to move forward and move through in a way that's supporting my highest good always. So I think that in life, we're presented with a lot of different obstacles and challenges and situations that maybe we don't really want to be in. And sometimes we can't change them. There's nothing that we can do to change them because there are situations in life that we cannot change. And so I really think that a first way to access, you know, that increased happiness is to genuinely accept 
the things that you cannot change and really making that such an important priority in your life because it's hard. It, it's hard when you want to do all this stuff and you can't, you know, but at some point you have to let go of what the expectation is and, you know, see what is it that you can accept in this moment right now? And what gift is it also bringing you in this moment? Because even through the hard seasons, there's always a gift. So yeah, exactly. trying to find that piece of gratitude, you know? Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. What you just said. And it's all so, so true. Yet I still, I sit here and I think about people that have had loss, you know, like mm -hmm. a family member or these people that have really, you know, we talk about COVID so many people lost family members and they have this expectation that their spouse or whoever, their child or mother will always kind of be there until an old age. And so this <laughs> expectation of, you know, having your partner gone even, where do people even start to accept? I mean, to me, that would just seem so overwhelming. And I think if you had any ideas around that, because I think we get so stuck. I mean, not that you shouldn't have a time to grieve, but people get so stuck on people that there really is nothing they can do. And they'll spend years of being unhappy and all the people that are around them that are living, that they could be living with that. What do you think about that? It's such an interesting question. And it's it's a really, really, really good point. And I've seen this happen way before COVID. Um, I've seen this happen where people have lost someone and they've never been able to accept that loss. And I think the thing we always think about, and you kind of said it, Shelly, is like, you know, we think that we have forever here, but we don't. And, you know, we think that we're always going to be guaranteed to live until 90, but we aren't. And I think that I've experienced a lot of life, a lot of loss in my life. And one thing that I can say for certain is that there is a way to come to terms with what has happened. It doesn't mean that you have to forget. That's the difference. Yeah. Like you don't have to forget and you don't have to quote unquote, like get over it. But what you can do is just, again, like I was saying before, like, accept that this is the reality. And it's funny that you say that because one of my deepest fears, and I'll just be very genuine. Okay. I don't ever talk about this, but I'll share it with you. One of my deepest fears is loss. I'm terrified. Every time my husband leaves the front door, I'm like, will he come home tonight? And that's a genuine fear that I have, but I always have to remind myself that every, this is going to sound a little bit out there. So if your listeners are not overly spiritual, I kind of am. So one thing that I always think about is all of our souls, like we're on a journey. Everyone is on a journey. We meet, we cross paths, we intertwine, we get married, we have kids, we fall in love, we fall out of love. You know, you meet somebody else, you become good friends, like all this different stuff. Those are all things that your soul's journey wants to go on, I think. And so, you know, at the end of the day, like you can't control how you will go. And it may, it will always feel unfair, I think, especially during this like time of COVID with all these people who have lost their lives. Like it wouldn't have happened if COVID didn't happen, right? But like the truth of the matter is a global pandemic happened. You know what I mean? And so there's no one to blame. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, there's, you know, we always want to find someone to blame. We always want to put the blame somewhere. And sometimes there really just isn't. And so the more that you can sort of find that inner peace within yourself and using those like different tools to just, I don't know, connect deeper and dive in. Like, I feel like that the way that you heal is to heal yourself and you have to acknowledge what's going on first. You can't just pretend it doesn't exist. So, and I think too, like you said, there's a silver lining. I think the other, like I said earlier, my mom's best friend of 60 years that was family to us oh. passed away. And I, my sister was in such a bad place. And I said, Kim, you know, well, mom is 79. I said, you've got to refocus some of your energy here. Mom is here. We don't know. Look, Shirley was gone in two weeks. Like, don't we want to celebrate our mom that's here now? And yes, yeah. we have to have that time. But that's what I want to urge people to is that, you know, you just don't, you, you don't know how much time you have. We have the, the silver lining is you do have other family members that are there to support you and love you and go through it with you, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just, digging yourself in this dark hole, you know, and being lost. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I was also, I was going to touch on also one of the biggest things is, you know, reaching out to the people, like how do you find happiness in life? It's reaching out to the people that can support you regardless of what the situation is. Right. And making sure that you always have those people who have your back. I have so many, like, I'm not going to say so many, like I have like maybe like two or three people that I can go to 
um, and just know that no matter what I say to them, they're going to support me and they're going to understand. And I don't need someone to tell me how to fix it. I need someone to listen to me yes. and to hear what I'm saying so that I can start to process. I'm the type of person I talk out loud. You know what I mean? That's how I process everything that's going into my mind. But having those people that can genuinely support you is so important. And I feel like, again, because when you have someone who can listen to you and can support you in everything that you're going through and hold that space for you to process what you're feeling, mm -hmm. that person is kind of opening like a path for you to find what does happiness mean to you again? You know what I mean? Because happiness and life looks different after loss always. It's never going to be the same, especially if you like touch, like knock on what you lose a parent or something like that. Your life will never be the same, mm -hmm. you know, but that is the gift and the, the challenge that comes with being human on this earth. It's just the natural way things go, but it comes down to, we really have to, and I know for me, like, this is a huge theme, like it is a big theme that I'm working on in my life right now. And yeah, it's, it's about really coming to terms with the fact that like, why are those feelings are, why are those feelings there? What is making you feel unsafe? And how do you start to heal that and transform it? You know, I heard the other day, someone said grief is just another form of love. I mean, if you didn't have that love, you wouldn't have the grief. You just wouldn't care. Yeah. So really when you just look at it through that lens, like, gosh, I must've really loved that person for it to hurt so much, you know? Yeah. So my question for you, and when you talk about like having people to lean on and acceptance, and so let's say you are coming out of whatever time, you know, we're coming out of this pandemic or whatever, you want to increase happiness mm -hmm. by, by the doing, by the things that you're bringing into your life, the things that you're pursuing, like what, what advice do you have around that, around like you know, these crazy ideas that we may have, like, gosh, I want to start that thing, or I want to do that thing. I mean, you're a podcast producer, you must have people come to you all the time, like, I have this idea for a podcast, like, what advice do you have around leaning into the things that we're really excited about in life? I love that question. And I think if those things are making you really excited, there's a reason why. And I always say, like, lean into that excitement, lean into, you know, you wanting to, do that particular thing or explore that particular thing because honestly you never know what's going to happen to you in life so for example uh, i'll keep this a little, a little bit more brief but so i've been producing podcasts for the last two and a half years just editing and helping people like this that whatever my business didn't really start up until february of this year and it has exploded i've had to hire a team like a whole nine yards but if I didn't believe in myself and didn't believe that my dream was worthy of being achieved or even stepping into that, I would still be in the same place that I was probably back in January. You need to know that you're worthy of having whatever dream it is that you have in your mind. Because when you really break it down and you take away all of the different things, and I've been thinking this way since I was a kid. So I always used to say like, okay, we're all on this earth, but you know, you take away money, you take away jobs, you take away titles, like you take away all this different stuff that society tells you, you have to do, have to be, have to have. What is it that you want to do? And like, why can't you have it? And I always thought to myself, like, you know, if this person can be a multiple six figure business owner, why can't I? Like, why can't I? You started on your grandparents' couch. So did I, you know what I mean? So it's like, why not? Um, but I really think that comes from self-belief and self-trust and knowing that you deserve to have what you want in your life. And it's not an easy place to get to. Ask me back in 2017 or 2018, if I thought that I'd ever be deserving of having what I have today, I would have said, no, I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have even have put this idea forward because it would have been like, no way. But ask me today in 2021, you know, I still work through feelings of feeling like I deserve to have all of this stuff, mm -hmm. but it doesn't change the fact like I know that I'm worthy of it. And that's the difference, I think. So for whoever is listening right now, just make sure that whatever it is you want in your life, you can have it. It doesn't have to be a rash decision. I'm going to quit my job up and leave my life or anything like that. It doesn't have to be that way, but you get to decide. And, you know, Things aren't always what they seem. You don't always have to just do things because people have told you you have to do them. Think about what makes you light up inside. That is following your happiness. That's following your purpose. So that's really important, I think. I think too is a lot of times people want everything right now. They think yeah. it's going to come really fast. And that's not the case. And one of the things that you said that I thought was really important is that you recognize what you were doing to, in some ways, in the past, kind of sabotage what's you know now come to happen because you changed your attitude and you recognized hey look what i'm doing i'm i'm kind of making roadblocks in my own way and you got out of your own way and now look at you so 
you're a great example of happy and success. Thank you very much. And I also have to just throw in there, like, yeah, happy and successful are both way, things that I would describe myself, but also a lot of challenges I've had to get through to get to this point. It's not easy. Um, so I don't ever want anyone to look at me and be like, oh, look, she's got it all together. She had it. So everything comes so easily to her because it doesn't, because we all struggle. And, you know, just your, yeah, yeah, that would be my biggest reminder. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say in like a final note here, wouldn't you say that Sometimes as Shelly, to Shelly's point, wanting everything now, sometimes mm -hmm. I really think like it's just divine timing. You wouldn't have known you wanted to be a podcast producer two years ago because you barely started your podcast two years ago. So what your vision for your life was two years ago is probably mm. different than what it is today. And so it's just the unfolding of life and yeah. being in the pursuit of that joy, doing what brings you joy opens doors that you didn't even know were there until you are in it. Wouldn't you say? I completely yeah. agree with you. Yeah, I completely agree with you. You'll never know what you're capable of it, of in this life unless you just try. Like, you know, for me, it was, okay, purchase a podcast, Mike. Okay, get on the podcast. And I made so many mistakes in the beginning, so many mistakes. Like if I were to go back and do it again, I would do it probably completely differently, but also not at the same time because I wouldn't have learned the way that I learned if I didn't. So I think it's just so important, you know, just recognize that as long as you have an idea and a vision, you want to go somewhere, just keep going somewhere. And it doesn't matter if it works, if it doesn't, like, I can't even tell you how many programs I've launched that have failed, how many things I put out there that didn't work. And then, you know, and then the last launch that I did, it, it was amazing. You know what I mean? So it's like, always just try one more time. Always just try one more time because you actually never know when that moment will be. And do you really want to look back at the end of your life and say, oh, you know what? If I had just continued on from that one point, who knows what would have happened? Because honestly, who knows? And you can try and fail your whole life, but failure is, in my opinion, just a redirection into where you're meant to be anyways. And so, you know, I think about this, like, do I want to get the, to the end of my life and be like regretful of all the things I didn't try? No, I'd rather take the risk because worst comes to worst, I can go and, you know, if my business doesn't work, I can go back and work in corporate. I can go back. I can be, I can work at a grocery store. I don't care. You know what I mean? But yeah. I would never be able to fully say that I fully lived my life without taking that chance. You need to take those chances because they are what will bring you to like the most inspiring spot, I think. Wow. That so was so well good. good. Yay. Yay. Simona, I'm where can people find you online? How can they connect with you and tell us, give us that information and then we'll- For sure. Fine. For sure. For sure. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun chatting with you both. My Instagram, I- changed it my handle I changed it on the screen here okay. so it's at Simona with two underscores Costantini and then my podcast is called happiness happens podcast you can find it on any podcast platform out there and you can also find it on Instagram it's at happiness happens podcast um, and if you want to learn more about any like services or anything like that or even just get in touch go to my website simonacostantini.com it's all the same so if you find me on one platform you'll find me everywhere Yay. I love it thank you so much for being on our show today <laughs> you are just a breath of fresh air I love your energy you have a lot of pep I wish you lived close because I think we would all have fun hanging out. Yes. Where do you live? Where do you live? We're in Los Angeles. Like, oh, great. I'll let you know when I'm there next time. <laughs> oh, ever come down? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'd uh, love to I'm have you. I'm sending you hugs. You are just amazing, really. I just adore you. Thank you. I feel the same way. Thanks, everyone out there for watching. Well, it looks like we've made it to the end of this episode. I'm so grateful for you tuning into this week's episode, and I cannot wait to see you over on the next one. If you loved this conversation and this topic as much as I did, please feel free to leave us a rating or a review wherever you're listening. It takes just a second, and it is so important for us so that we can make sure to deliver this content to those who need it. I'm wishing you the most beautiful day wherever you are in the world, and remember that happiness happens when you're least expecting it.